Hello everyone, this is Curtis from Florida.io, and today I'm going to talk to you about the basics of gating. Florida.io is a completely free to use online flow cytometry analysis tool. To get started, head to Florida.io slash analysis in any web browser. I have a couple of files open here for analysis. On the far left-hand panel, there are a few different gates which we can select. We will go through all the main ones today. The first gate is the rectangle gate. So I'm going to select that from the side panel. Now I'll click and drag to draw the gate on the dot plot. I'm going to select this main population of cells here. Once I let go of the mouse button, the gate finalizes and a few things happen. First, a pop-up appears, which allows us to name the gate. You can enter a name for the population or just use the default name. I'm going to call this population cells. Once we choose a name for the gate, it will appear in the left-hand panel as a population under the file. It also displays the percentage of events in a gate out of the total events in the file. The dot plot will also display the name and the percentages for the gate as well. If you want to edit the gate, you can select it in the dot plot. When a rectangle gate is selected, the corners will become highlighted. If you drag the corners of the gate, it will be resized. You can also select the gate as a whole and move it around the plot. Note that when you change a gate, the statistics and percentages are updated. You can also rename a gate by double-clicking it in the file tree and typing a new name into the pop-up menu. To delete a gate, you can right-click it either in the file tree or in the dot plot and select Delete. Next, we'll try a polygon gate. I'll select that from the gating panel. Now, every time you click in the plot area, a new vertex will be added to the polygon gate. Double-clicking will finalize the polygon. Ellipse gates are drawn similarly. One unique aspect of an ellipse gate are the way that they are resized. When you initially draw the ellipse, you have direct control over the major axis length and the rotation of the ellipse. If you want to change a minor axis, you can edit the gate afterwards. Range gates are similar to rectangle gates where you click and drag to draw the gate and release mouse button to finalize it. Unlike most gates, range gates are available to draw both on dot plots and on histograms. Last, we have the quadrant gate. It's a little unique, so I'm going to delete all these other gates first. After selecting the quadrant gate from the side panel, you can click to divide the plot into four quadrants. Percentages will be shown for all quadrants and default names will be generated. You can rename individual quadrants by double-clicking the quadrant in the file tree. To edit the quadrant, click anywhere in the plot to make the gate editable, and then drag the center. Importantly, quadrants are grouped together, so if you delete one quadrant, all of its sibling quadrants will also be deleted. Now that we have been through all of the basic gates, let's go over some more details of gating. We'll start with drawing subgates. I'll draw a rectangle gate around these cells.
Now we need to display only the population of cells within that gate. This can be done easily by clicking on the gate in the file tree or double clicking the gate in the dot plot. Now we can draw a subgate on this population. I'm going to switch the X axis to a different parameter. These cells are a little bunched up here, so I'm going to adjust the axis a little bit. Now I'll draw our new gate. You'll notice that subgates have two different percentages shown. The first percentage is the percentage of events in the gate out of the total events in the file. The second percentage is the percentage of events in the gate out of the total number of events in the parent gate. Next, we'll talk about applying a gate to multiple files. You can easily drag and drop a gate around the file tree. I'm going to take both these gates and apply them to a second file. If you want to apply the entire gating tree for the current file to all files in the project, you can easily do that with a keyboard shortcut. First, I'll delete these gates. Now I'll select the file with the gating tree of interest and then hit Control and A at the same time. That will instantly apply all gates in the file to every file in the project. One important detail to be aware of is that by default, all gates that you copy will be linked together, meaning that if you edit a gate in one file, it will change the gates in all files. For example, if I edit this gate here, you will see the gate and its associated percentages change for all files. Lastly, I'll just say a few words about navigating the file tree. You can flip through the files and gates using either the arrow keys on your keyboard or the arrows on the dot plot, but the two methods work slightly differently. Using the keyboard, the right arrow will go up a sublevel and the left arrow will go to the parent population, as so. The up and down arrows will cycle through sibling populations at the same level. The arrows on the dot plot work slightly differently. They cycle through analogous populations. For example, I'll cycle through all populations of this rectangle gate. This is really useful for doing comparisons of populations that are similar between files. That's all we have for you today. Hopefully you have an idea of the basics of working with gates in Florida.io. Follow us on Twitter at FloridaCyto, where we post the latest updates and any new features. If you have any questions, comments, or any features you'd like to see us add, feel free to go to the contact page on Florida.io and send us a message. Thanks for watching.